Welcome to Tech Throwback. Today I am back with another, oh no, not another iRiver device, right? <laughs> you guessed it. I am back with another iRiver device. And this time it's one of the greatest little portable media players that they made early on in the game. So why do I have to buy it from Ukraine? Well, I bought it from Ukraine because it came in a giant package with other MP3 players like my T9 and other iRiver players we haven't talked about yet. But this is probably the coolest one and one of the most feature packed micro portable media players. This little guy is only about three inches by two inches, but it packs a 2.2 inch color LCD screen. Of course, you measure that screen real estate diagonally, but it still packs a punch for its size. It's only about a half inch thick. Look at that and it's got a ton of technology. I mean, real quick, let's talk about the file formats this can play before we jump into a tour of it. It can play MP3s, it can play ASF, it can play Aug for Beast, it can play WMA, it can play plays for sure, WMAs, the DRM protected ones, it can play MPEG-4 video, it can play JPEG pictures, it can play macro media flash player files for games, it can let you read your text files, this thing, is a tiny little computer. And it could also be a cool little TV. There is a dock, I don't have the dock unfortunately, but it looked like a little bitty TV with speakers on each side of it. And this thing would slot into it. And then it would give you a line in if you wanted to record from external sources, say like your iRiver IMP350 CD player with its line out. It would give you a line out if you wanted to play it through external speakers and it would give you USB mini B. So you'd have a ton of connectivity options and it was really cool. It looked like a tiny little TV that this thing would drop into. I don't have the dock, unfortunately. They're quite a bit more rare than the players are, but this was a very cool design. So now let's jump in and talk about the player itself. It's called the iRiver Clicks. Why is it called the Clicks, you might ask? Well, iRiver just puts X's on the back of everything, don't they? Slim X, Clicks, they, they like the X. But it's called the Clicks because it uses their D Clicks navigation system. So up, down, right, left, just like a standard D-pad. The entire screen actually clicks in. So you get some feedback that it clicked and when you push on it, that's the direction it moves the menu on the screen. So it's pretty intuitive. Now on top of the player, we have volume up, volume down, a little hole for the microphone right there. As we turn it around, we've got the power button and also a little asterisk button that you can program to do whatever you want. It's a soft key and there are tons of functions you can assign to that. If we go ahead and flip it over, we've got the hold switch and it indicates that it's in hold with some red paint there. Didn't want to go in. It has, a, unfortunately, a proprietary USB 2 connector on the bottom. It's USB 1.1 and 2.0 compatible. I don't know why they did it, but they stuck that weird connector on there. If you have the dock, it gives you a normal USB port. But unfortunately, if you're traveling or anything like that, you had to keep a special cable with you. On the other side of the bottom, we have the reset button. You'll have to use a paper clip to access that. And on the final side of the player, we've got the headphone jack. 3.5 millimeter, as you would expect. And on the back, it just says four gigabytes. This is the four gig capacity one, and it's actually a U20. There was an earlier version of this player that I remember called the U10. It wasn't the clicks at that time, and the interface wasn't as well refined as this one is. And uh, it only came in five, 12 megabyte and one gigabyte capacities. These, the U20s, went all the way up to four gigabytes, and this one is the four gigabyte. On the back, it does also show that it has SRS Wow. So obviously we've talked about SRS Wow before on the T9. This has it too because iRiver loved to throw that in. Now the clicks came bundled with Windows Media Player 11. Like I said, it was plays for sure compatible. And that version of Windows Media Player 11 also came with MTV's Urge, which was an early streaming music site where you could purchase music for 99 cents a song or for $14.95 a month. You could have access to their library and drag and drop songs from their library onto the player. Not only that, but if you found a song that you were kind of renting from them through the streaming service, you could flip through the menu on here and go to buy. And when you plug the player back into your computer, it would pop up and ask you if you actually wanted to buy that song and you could keep it forever. So 99 cents a song, keep them forever or $14.95 a month to play whatever you want. These days, we know that basically everyone has shifted to subscription music like that where you pay $10 a month, $15 a month and stream all of your music. And unfortunately, you don't own any of it. You can download it if you think you're not gonna have service for a while and you wanna keep playing the file back, 
but you can't move it to a portable device like this. That music has to live on some type of device where they can reach in with their hooks, internet connectivity, whatever it is, and take the song back away if you stop paying for the service. So this was way ahead of its time with uh, you know subscription music that could be drag and dropped right onto your portable device. So now that we've talked about the clicks, let's jump in and actually use this thing. It's a pretty cool experience. Hey, it's not dead. I thought it was dead there for a minute. All right, so uh, the screen, there, there's probably like a ribbon cable that connects to the screen on this thing. It's starting to flake out. Obviously it's pretty old, but it's still working, so I'm impressed. Here we are on the main menu. It starts with music. If we scroll down, we get pictures, videos, settings. And if we go the other way, we get now playing the built-in FM radio and extras. I'm excited about the extras, so let's jump in there and check it out first. I think that's where the games are. I haven't played any of the games yet. I have listened to some music on it. So we have recordings, alarm clock, flash games, text, and browse device. Check it out, is that the file browser? It sure is. Flash games, pictures, recordings, service, text, video. Those are obviously folders in the directory structure where you can just drag and drop whatever you want. Cool. All right, anything in text? Text is empty with an exclamation point. And flash games, empty. Come on. Oh well, uh, alarm clock, nice little alarm clock. Alarm is currently off. You can set an alarm bell, time, date, all that good stuff, pretty simple. Under recordings, checking free memory, there are no recordings, but this will record 126 hours 31 minutes and 58 seconds. That's a long time. You could plug this thing in and rock and roll for a very long time. It does say voice in down here in the bottom right corner of the display. Uh, I'm assuming you could plug in headphones with a microphone and it might actually switch to recording to that. I don't know, but it might. All right, so let's hit stop. This thing is really simple to use. I am impressed. FM radio, we'll go there because it's next. So we have a visual indication of the FM tuning dial. It says we're 105.75 and if we scroll through here we'll find a local station i don't expect anything like rds but i think 1021 should play some music if you hold down it will scan that's pretty cool if you hold over you can record fm saved fm recordings fm recording quality save presets stereo mono auto preset setting and tuner region of course that's, uh, that's been on a lot of these things. It says the tuner region's Europe because it came from Ukraine, so let's change it to USA. I think the entire player just rebooted. Hey, it does work. I am listening to a local country station that quickly. I do want to mention the volume control. It's a really good graphical on-screen display, just like the T9. As you turn it up, it increases the amount of bars coming out of the speaker and it tells you what number it's set to. No ambiguity there. I always love having a, a number that the volume is set to. That way you can set it to even numbers. Well, even numbers or fives, one of the two. So uh, what are we taking a stand for anyway? Anyway, let's go back out of the FM tuner. Here's our now playing screen. Nothing's playing. Okay. And music, we have uh, play all, playlists, artists, songs, albums, genres, audiobooks, and now playing, play all. There is some music on here. The Accident, Wang Kuan, Luna the Shadow Dust. I don't, I don't know any of this. This does show album art. The U10 player did not show album art. This was a huge upgrade and it's kind of cool. Underneath the song that's currently playing in kind of grayed out text, it says next, the balcony, which is cool. So you know what song is gonna play after that. And of course, if we hold down on it, the entire player shuts off. That, that wasn't the goal. I did mention the screen display key on this one. It has been well used and of course shipped across you know the world and ended up here with it flaking out just every once in a while, but it does keep playing. <laughs> so that's cool. So we have play mode over here. We'll have normal repeat one, shuffle, shuffle and repeat. And under that we have quick list. If you wanna make a playlist on the device, you can do that. Also a really cool feature for its time. A lot of things. You were just stuck with whatever order songs were stuck in the folders. Select EQ, and we've got a bunch of EQs here. Normal, classic, live, pop, rock, jazz, U-bass, metal, dance, party, club, custom EQ, and SRS, wow. 
and custom EQ, you have to go set that somewhere else. There's rate, in case you wanna give the song a one to five star rating. Of course, the buy button, if you don't own it currently. Uh, scan speed and play speed. Cool, play speed. You can change the playback speed from negative five to positive five, in case you need to go over some lyrics or listen to an audiobook faster, or whatever you wanna do. That's pretty cool. What a sweet feature for back in the day. So that is all the music playback options. A very capable player. It also now shows that we're in the custom EQ up here at the very top. And of course, the D-Clicks navigation does always show what I'm going to do if I push anywhere on the D-pad. So that is nice. Let's go back. We're not gonna worry about playlists, albums, all that fun stuff. You guys do understand what those do. Over here in pictures, we have a Play all, pictures, playlists, and pictures. There are no pictures. Man, we're not, we're, we're kind of striking out here. If you hold down on the right side of the D-pad, even when I was over in the pictures menu, it jumps back to the now playing menu. That's kind of nice as well. All right, videos, is there anything on here? We have Luna, the Shadow Dust, OST, but it's not a video, it just says empty. Well, we don't have any videos. So we're striking out again, let's go to settings. This is the last thing on the player, and you know this, this thing actually looks really good all the time. What a great theme. We've got date and time, it's not set, it thinks it's 2006 right now, I'm not gonna worry about setting it. Uh, we have sounds, so there's the custom EQ settings, the SRS settings, fade in if you wanted to ramp the audio volume up when the player starts up. Uh, we have display, display orientation, which you can actually map to that soft key if you wanna flip between portrait and landscape orientations. Oh, that's pretty cool. Look at that. Now you can use it like this with the headphone jack up. Pretty sweet. All right, let's go back to, oh wait, display orientation, landscape. I wanna go back. I, I like landscape. I'm a big fan of horizontal everything. All right, wallpaper. We have auto. We, you can set a different wallpaper for every day of the week in this menu. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, pictures, or a random photo. And every day of the week, is a different color theme. So we'll leave that on auto. LCD brightness, it's a low, medium, and high brightness settings. This LCD isn't like crazy impressive or anything like that. It's QVGA 320 by 240. That's the actual resolution of it. And it's, it's okay. You could probably see it just fine. The display on this one's pretty scratched up. So it just, it works. But the later ones, the second generation of the clicks have ammo LED displays, which would have been way better than this. That said, it works. All right, smart key. So this is how you map that additional button under the power button here. And right now it's set to add to quick list. If you just hit the button, it'll add a song to a playlist. You can change it to display orientation, home, play pause, shuffle all. You can do a whole lot of stuff with that button. And of course I hit back and it just went black. All right, we're back. It takes about five to 10 seconds every time it does that. I don't know what's going on with it. All right, it didn't break that time, it just went to sleep. So now let's go to timer. We have the auto power off timer, the sleep timer and the backlight. I mean, that seems like it should be in display, but on this one, it's all under timers. Sleep timer, very nice. As always, I love that. Advanced, so we can set the player language for the interface. You can change your sort between ascending and descending. You can set the text scroll speed from 1x, 2x, and 4x, very nice. You can rebuild the library, uh, like the T9 does that every time it turns on. This one doesn't, so that's kind of nice. You can wipe the device, you can see the system information, and you can reset all settings. System information, 2.0 AUHK is the firmware. That seems like Australian firmware, or Australian Hong Kong. That's all of advanced on to about, and we get the iRiver logo and 1999 to 2006. So this was probably made in 2006. The D-Click system patents are pending. Concept and design by the iRiver creative team. And that's it. So that is a really cool, I mean tiny, look at this thing. 2.2 inch screen on that tiny little player that fits in your hand. You could carry it around anywhere and people wouldn't even know what you were holding. So really nice, full color screen. You could watch videos on this thing. You could even convert movies at a really bad resolution like 480p and carry them around in your pocket with this. Or you could play Flash Player games. That is very impressive. Not to mention being able to look at text files, but flat text files, not Word documents, not RTF, flat text files. That's all you could check out with this thing. So you wouldn't be doing any business on it. You wouldn't be editing any documents, but you could read very simple text talks. 
Well, now all that's left is for me to listen to some music on this thing. And how long can you listen to music on this thing? Well, not that long actually. It was rated to 28 hours of playback time, but in laboratory tests, it seems like it gets closer to 18 hours. That's pretty bad. 10 hours off? That's pretty outrageous. Maybe if the screen's off the whole time and you're only listening to music, it would work out. But with mixed media like video, obviously video playback's very intensive and burns through batteries. Uh, you might see 10 hours less than what you were expecting with this little guy. And at this point, 20 years later basically, this battery is gonna die very fast. It's down one bar and it was fully charged when we started about 20 minutes ago. So it's not gonna last too long, but this thing is very cool. I love the size, the capabilities of it, a tiny little computer that would let you carry around your movies, your music, your pictures of your family, whatever you wanted. And this was way before all the other devices were doing it. And it didn't cost that much money. It was like $200. So pretty impressive for what iRiver did at the time. Like always, great industrial design. So other than the proprietary cable, iRiver knocked it out of the park again, but they do miss sometimes and we'll cover those in a later episode. That is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching Tech Throwback. Don't forget to subscribe and I can't wait to see you on the next one.